Hello and welcome everybody to another edition of the short interviews for the IATIP community. So today I welcome Sophia Franco from SAMS, the Scottish Association for Marine Science, based in Oban. And I wonder, Sophia, please may you introduce yourself and your background, please. Sure. So I'm a biologist, uh, but now I work half-half in between biology to the more social sciences. Um, I have training in aquaculture and fisheries, but I'm a lecturer at SAMS in aquaculture governance and innovation. Um, and quite a few of the projects that I hold now are related to public perception of aquaculture. And this is what I'm going to focus on today. Great. Okay. So could you um, get into the current study that you've been working on and your findings, please? Or maybe let's talk about the project and the reason for doing it first. Sure. So um, this project is a very, um, it's a small project, um, but it comes to fill a, a gap that we knew existed and it was very important at the UK level. And this is on um, public perception as a limiting uh, factor to, to aquaculture development um, and, and how this is still very poorly understood on what actually, what is that, that perception and what modulates perception? What do people think of aquaculture and, and why? So we, we started uh, the Percept project to look exactly at this uh, in the UK and we have um, been investigating uh, public perception of aquaculture in the UK and what shapes it so that we can understand what are the main concerns and the main positives in terms of shellfish and finfish aquaculture and so that we can use this to inform practices so how we do things but also inform how we communicate what we do better um, to the public uh, in a way so as part of this project what we did is we conducted um, a review of all this, the international studies that existed on the topic which are quite a lot but they're very different so they just offer a complementary uh, picture and we did a series of focus groups uh, in the UK so discussing with people to see what they think of, of aquaculture and what they know where do they get the information etc. Okay so what were the findings? Well the, the findings were there's a lot of findings so, so I'll, I'll try to just pick up a few or we could stay uh, in here for, for hours. So the main thing um, that we observed, and again, this is going to be very familiar to, to most uh, farmers, is, is that there's a lack of knowledge and understanding of aquaculture. This is the most cross-cutting thing um, that, that we see, and in a way we were expecting um, this. There's also um, a prevalence of, of misconceptions. So there's a lot of misconceptions which are very interesting some of them can be very graphical like uh, the fish the salmon being injected with dye right it's a very graphical image of a salmon being constrained and being injected so not only um people know little they understand little there's also all these other things that might not necessarily um be be factual and and the issue um in here is that when you don't have a background you can make your own assumptions in a way you can mistrust uh, um, the industry you can absorb new information at face value and this is um, what we need to understand because good or bad information will not be filtered in the same way so all of this has repercussions on what people think of aquaculture and what they decide to do whether this is like objecting development or purchasing or not purchasing um, the products another thing that we notice is that most of the information that people say they they get or how they are exposed to aquaculture information is not through the industry and the government so very frequently where do you get information from about aquaculture i get it from documentaries netflix tv radio press which is all nice and good, but this is all mediated information. Mm -hmm. um, so there is an angle to, to, to all of this. Um, and most importantly, um, if this information doesn't come from the industry, there is no industry voice shaping um, this, this narrative and clarifying what is in fact being done, what, where we are aiming um, to be so, 
one of the things that we know is that we need to work um, better to inform the public uh, in a way on what the industry does, how it does it, what are the efforts that we are doing uh, to, to improve um, and improve this transparency and the overall trust that exists uh, in the sector. And besides informing, um, there's a different level in here, which is engaging. Mm -hmm. so these are two different things, right? One can be a campaign, can be opening up, can be changing label and, and making things more transparent. Um, the other is actually connecting with people at, at a different level. Uh, because again, what we notice is that aquaculture is still very foreign to a lot of people. It's not necessarily something that is ingrained in the tradition. There, there can be exceptions on very local sectors that have been there for a long time of aquaculture and they are part of the community. But in general, it's still a very foreign concept um, yeah. to, to a lot of people, right? And this also, again, can mean that you might distrust something that you don't um, know. But in effect, what we, we can have is an industry that is hard to relate and that is also faceless in a way, it's just an industry, uh, right? So better engagement in, in here is something that can really improve our understanding uh, of what people care about, what needs to change in the way that we operate, um, in a way for people to approve the industry, for us to, uh, for people to grant that social license, in a way which needs to be earned by the way that the industry um, operates. So, we, we notice that this engagement is important because there are different groups uh, of people that, that we speak and um, we speak, for example, with people that are physically close to the industry. So, for example, coastal uh, communities in areas where there is aquaculture production yeah. or people that are, I we would call it psychological psychologically close to the industry. So people for where the industry is relevant, for example, their core values. And this can be, for example, vegans and vegetarians, yeah. where aquaculture really matters as a process to um, the decisions that they take. So this thing about physical and psychological uh, proximity is an important one, because what we see is that these groups are often more knowledgeable of the industry. They know um, better. And, and they understand there's a range of nuances. There's a, a higher understanding of, of the positive to the negative. What we see then is that depending on what is important to you, you take a decision to value more a negative point or a positive point, but at least you're understanding uh, the picture, which is more than what can be said for those people that feel very far away from the industry, right? Yeah. Where it's just yeah. a blank sheet. Um, to, to be uh, completed. So what we understand is that cultivating this engagement is, is important to avoid things becoming black and white in a way. We need things to, to become a picture in full uh, color and we can only do that uh, if we are engaging um, effectively in, with people. Um, another very interesting point um, which again gets, is very debated in an academic context, mm -hmm. uh, but perhaps less so in, in an industry one, is that there's a difference between what people say they prefer, to what they effectively do, right? So I can say that I prefer wild caught, but I can then go and buy farmed, right? So this, is, this has been studied, and we see this again in our study, this has been seen by others uh, before. So there's what we call a, a dissonant, behavior. So that's the, there is what you prefer as a concept and that is what you do after you consider all the other things. Yeah. So this is again an important point, right? Because increasing acceptance um, might not necessarily lead to a higher purchase, right? These are not necessarily related. When we are looking at, for example, higher purchase, um, you're also looking at availability of the the, the products in the supermarket, the range of products, their price range, uh, certifications, etc. So it's more complex um, than that. But in things like, for example, objecting to a planning application, this might be a bit more linear yeah. in a way. Yeah. So we just need to be mindful 
Um, because when we ask people, in a lot of cases, people will say, I prefer wild caught. But this is not necessarily translated in purchase uh, behavior, which I think is an important um, point. Um, is this making sense so far? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> okay, perfect. Um, then the other two things that I would say that we looked at was the images that people hold of fish farming and, and shellfish uh, farming, which are very different. Um, and it's something that we were not going to look at uh, in the beginning, but then we took industry advice and they suggested, why don't you ask separately? And that was the best thing that we could have done, uh, really, because they are not uh, comparable. So it's very interesting. Um, this is a UK study. Um, so it needs to be looked at from, from a UK context. So when we ask people about fin fish, um, people frequently bring up salmon. This is natural, it's what we yeah. produce in here. But then they also mention things like industrial, crammed fish, low health and welfare. They refer to the pens. So there's, you can see the image that is being formed of what people associate with it. There are some awareness of, of the methods. You can see that people are talking about the pens, they're talking about the, the factories where the fish get processed. Um, and there's also a, a good awareness of the socioeconomic importance of the sector. Um, at the national level. So people will say, oh, this is very important for Scotland. This is a yeah. key sector for the UK or we are recognized by our salmon. So, so the image is, is complex, but this association we, where we basically have is an image that varies from neutral where people just say, oh, it's produced in pens, is, is good for the economy to where they say crammed, low health and welfare. So it's very negative. So it's a neutral to negative. Um, connotation and what we see is that people really relate to fish as feeling pain. Um, there's the whole thing about feeling pain, suffering from disease. Uh, people care about the fish being confined and having their freedom limited. This is an important uh, point and is very different from fish to shellfish. So it's not an issue in shellfish but in here the, the animals are perceived as, as confined. So this is an important um, Point. people care about the, um, the local negative impact. It's very close to their heart uh, in a way, it's very close to where, um, where they are in a way in the, in the wilder, the, the impact on the local populations, for example, of SKPs, right? This is relevant, it's yes. close to, to, your, to your home. Uh, and there's also the, the socioeconomic nuances in, in here. And, and here, again, people are aware of the importance at an economic level, but there's also the case of the jobs in rural areas and the overall impact on, uh, on the supply, supply chain jobs in the communities, right, that the communities get more populated. All of that is also a very positive point, is really seen as very, very positive at, at the community level. But not everyone is aware of this. <laughs> so communities are very aware of this local benefit but not necessarily the most distal groups. So you can see how distal groups might be missing what is an important positive of fish farming while being uh, more aware of other negatives. So this is all to say that we need to look very carefully what different people are experiencing as, as aquaculture and change or communicate um, accordingly. Um, but on, the, on a positive note, people are capable of understanding the nuances. Uh, but then it's a matter of what is relevant to them. And the issues of health and welfare, environmental impacts, and the socioeconomic benefits, especially the local ones, are a big topic. Uh, I would dare to say that they end up being more important on how people see the industry than other uh, things. So if you're faring well on those, this is very positive. Um, to, to you, uh, but it also means that in the ones that you're faring negative, they need to be addressed from an industry standpoint. Uh, if, you, if they are not uh, addressed, so issues with health and welfare, issues with SKPs, at least efforts that you are trying to address need to be communicated. So that again, the narrative starts to become more balanced, but I think it's important that um, there's not only a communication of what you're doing, but also actions to evidence that because people are very 
mindful that there needs to be a consistency on what you're saying with what you're doing. Exactly. Uh, and they can be very critical if they don't perceive that, um, that alignment. So, um, yeah, and the other point is, of course, to highlight the, the positives in here, uh, such as the local um, jobs, which, again, as I said, are not visible. By, by certain groups and should be part of the debate when we are discussing development. Uh, for shellfish, and again, bearing in mind that in, in the UK, shellfish farming is mostly bivalves, right? So similar um, to, island, uh, to Ireland, what we see is that shellfish is treated very differently from fin fish um, and is also a lot more invisible. Mm -hmm. And this is particularly interesting. So a lot of people are unaware of shellfish um, farming. So the thing that I, I heard most frequently is, I don't know, or I assume. Um, so this, this shows you the level and people look, a lot of people looked puzzled when asked, what do you mean shellfish farming? Is there shellfish farming? Um, which is quite interesting. Uh, the issues with, uh, with things like I assume is that people then, when the sentence starts, as I assume, you're then looking to fill the gaps. And, yeah. right? and you're, you're filling the gaps in the moment. So you're going to go um, with, I assume, um, I don't know, but I assume it has lower impact because I don't see it. Yeah. Or you go, I, um, I don't know, but I assume that the impact will be similar to fish farming because that's the only thing that I know. Right? Exactly. So it depends which jump people make um, in their brain. And I think this is a very key point on why it's important to fill the gaps rather than leave them open to be filled up in the moment because one can be very positive and the other can be a very um, negative. But what we see in reality for, for shellfish farming in, in here is that it's seen as very low, low impact in certain uh, for certain people the fact that he's perceived as low profit and less industrialized will, was also very positive because he wasn't seen as big business which again people relate more to it's a farmer right you can yeah. you, you can see that and we notice that there's a, a very blurred line on whether shellfish farming is in effect farming because when there is knowledge, it, it sounds a bit counterintuitive, but when people know about shellfish farming, they will say, but they are just placing them out there and they are growing, you're not feeding them, the input is minimal, and then you're collecting them. So this is based on what people see as, as their knowledge. So it just passes as very natural, very in tune with the environment. And this is mm -hmm. extremely positive uh, point for the industry and something to be put out there, look how natural this food production sector is, right? Especially in comparison to all the other food production sectors. So why shouldn't this be showcased if it's such um, a positive? There are um, perceived issues also, um, no issues on, on welfare and the limited um, freedom. The few issues that we had pointed out were related to the culture of exotic species that we have. Um, in here and the, the whole SKPs and, and the, the issues related to that. Uh, and there were some food safety issues. So people having bad experiences with, for example, food poisoning and remembering that for a really long, long time. And that comes up more frequently in shellfish than it comes on, on fish. It, it is uh, shellfish specific in a way um, okay. subject. But yeah, what this means is that shellfish is very neutral in a way that it is perceived when it is uh, perceived. So just wrapping up, what we see is that in, in the UK from the study that we have conducted, which is obviously it has its limitations and we need to be aware of that, there's no cross-cutting disapproval of aquaculture. And this is something that often it's brought up to us by the industry, oh, people really dislike us um, in a way because that's what comes in, in the press and we this is not something we have seen mm -hmm. neither we have seen that at the community level like the communities in areas where aquaculture is we actually find that these communities can understand the issues but then it's a matter of how important they are to them and the efforts that they perceive the industry of 
of, of doing. But what we have is a lack of knowledge of the sector, a lack of engagement with the sector, and a lack of communication led by the sector and by the government, which therefore erodes trust to a certain level on, on these things. So sorry if this was too long. <laughs> Hopefully it made some sense. I, I, I was expecting a range of um, findings, so that's great. So I do have one question that we didn't discuss earlier, and that is, as a result of this, what are you planning to do as part of the project, or what are you hoping will happen to improve public perception? So if people watch documentaries, is there space for industry to develop a documentary? I mean, obviously that's challenging because you want to give an honest story, but is that something that you think will happen or is likely to happen? What's the solution, I guess, is my question. Yeah, it's hard, isn't it? Um, because the issue with, with communication uh, coming from the industry and, and from the government is the issue of impartiality, right? Yeah. You have a stake, right? So you can be perceived as very partial. And there is a tendency to let's just communicate positives. Yeah. And again, that might not necessarily be um, the top solution. You can and you should be communicating positives, and this is the feeling that we get. However, there's no reason why you shouldn't be addressing the negatives. Because if you're just saying, this is all I do good, and you're ignoring all the things that people see you as not doing as well, this is what's cropping up in people's minds. So. It, it puts, uh, obviously, the industry and the government in a difficult position that they need to tackle both the positives and the negatives but the negatives can be tackled through action and they can be tackled through what you're doing to address them and you should um, tackle but there's certainly a need to engage and to give more information about how things are done we see that there's a lot of an awareness of how things are regulated how companies are verified um, and again you don't know you will assume right or you will trust biased information so getting that out there is um important mm. but i think um just high level communication misses something and it misses the engagement part that needs to be done and the actions on the ground that really speak highly to people um okay. in a way so who who or what body would be the best voice to help public perception or would it be a mixture no. <laughs> um yeah i think what we need and again this is more of a personal view not results from the project point of view is an overall communication um and we also need something that other sectors have done very well which is having um chefs speaking for the sector for example yeah people that are trusted in a way um that connect to people because you need to put a face on the industry which is currently not there so you need the industry to be open and transparent and this is what we are this is how we do and we are trying and we are going to do this actions to solve the problems that we know there are there so you need that you also need the government to say we are in fact regulating we are <laughs> there are rules and we are not colluding with the industry so there needs to be an understanding and a communication that things are separate you need researchers to communicate what are effectively uh, the facts but you need those that relate to the public you need the chefs you need the influencers to actually create a dialogue on seafood that is much needed in a yeah. way because the, the landscape in, in a supermarket, you know what I'm talking, is a mess. You arrive at the supermarket, you don't understand where things come from. It's so difficult to understand what is sustainable, what is grown at home, abroad, it's just, it's difficult. And yeah. um, we are knowledgeable people. So imagine for the consumer that arrives there and wants to make a sustainable choice or a choice that helps the economy of the country, um, right? That goes with their values and it's hard. So we also need retailers to be passing the, the correct information, to be placing the products and give, giving credit where credit is due. We need the certification to be made clear. So 
I, I know it is a horrible solution because everyone needs to act, but it is. I yeah. think everyone needs to act in a way to get the right messages across and for people to understand what aquaculture does and also for people to have an input on how they see aquaculture moving forward because that's ultimately where the approval is going to be uh, in a way. Great, thank you. So um, obviously this is for the Irish community. So I just wonder if there's any kind of obvious we've already mentioned similarities with the species but if there's any obvious differences um that you see between the uk and ireland yeah um they're obviously different um contexts there's also the the type of species that get produced that are um different that's how there's also how seafood is perceived in ireland and how seafood is perceived in england which is quite quite different but certainly when we look for example at salmon aquaculture in in here we are looking at the percentage that is uh, organic and, and certified a very small uh, percentage when we look at ireland is a completely dif different ball game um so in a way you're lucky that some of the issues of welfare and environmental interactions uh, for example will be addressed to a certain extent by by the certification it doesn't mean that there's not something yet to be addressed in a way but certainly that organic certification will help in the eyes of, of public perception but you still have all the positives that can and should be communicated in a way such as the jobs the local economy and what that means um, and there's certainly um, advances to be made beyond organic certification to really get that information out there and do better in a way and um, I think even when you are organically certified there's a lot that can be done in terms of engaging the communities where aquaculture is happening delivering benefits at the local level what we have seen in here when we speak with communities in aquaculture areas is that they want the aquaculture companies to be a part of of the community to engage in a way externally so that is unrelated to certification or not that is you being a more social actor which then gives you that type of approval at the local level and if you have high approval at the local level it's very hard not to have it outside right because you you have that that ground um supports um in in terms of the the shellfish um things would be vastly equipable in in here on what i said from from the uk um but there's certainly a lot of work to be done in communicating the benefits of shellfish um and again this is something that i touched very little upon but that we discuss a lot in here which are the health benefits of shellfish and how these are vastly unrecognized such as micronutrients right um things that are uh, lacking <laughs> at the population level that you can get from shellfish and then people don't recognize there's a whole debate on the ecosystem services which you will notice that i didn't mention because people are not mentioning that shellfish is providing you all these ecosystem services filtering the people don't know that yeah. so there's there's what we see and is and there's what we see that people actually have no idea about should they not because it is something that is providing a an ecosystem services so there is something to be communicated in in there um and, and overall there's the level of transparency and trust and giving that face uh, to the industry that i think we all should be doing because we are um aquaculture comes facing a backdrop of fisheries which is a very established sector in a way it's the only seafood is the only sector where you can choose while caught effectively for uh in, in a cross-cutting way you can choose between wild caught and farm you have both streams working and fisheries are such an ingrained tradition and aquaculture needs to build that um tradition so that is a, a part of 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 things um in a way and yes i could go on for hours but maybe we'll just cut it in in here okay so could you tell me what's happening next with your studies relating to public perception yeah so currently what we have been doing i've been speaking with everyone uh so we have been um 
showcasing the results in the UK, in, in Brussels, in all the, the platforms that we possibly can because publications take time to write and we have been trying them on, on uh, writing them on, on the background. Um, so we have been showcasing the results, we have been writing the publications in the meanwhile, um, they should be coming out in the next few months. So you will have an organized uh, take on our data. <laughs> in a way, in a publication that, that you, can, uh, you can read. But we are also looking at um, funding options to extend uh, the project, to take the project to the next level. We have applied to, to a range of um, funding. We'll, we'll see how that goes. Um, but our feeling is that a lot is still unknown, in a way. Um, we need to have a better idea of how the population is segmented, in a way. What are the views across segment what is important to who in a way um, so that we can actually address and, and we need studies that are specific on communication and, and marketing testing approaches and seeing which ones work in which context which again is not straightforward we are trying to guess a lot of the things from what we have but we effectively need to test yeah. different communication approaches and see what which works so we which takes time and yeah. in our case takes funding too. Yeah. Um, so we'll be looking at, at uh, continuing the studies um, that way because I think there's a lot um, to be done because seafood will become increasingly important and is vastly agree that aquaculture is a pathway to raise um, that seafood availability. So we need to be able to do this with approval <laughs> and with people understanding what we are doing. Yeah. Um, in a way. Absolutely. So you said about this um, publication coming out soon. How can people find out more? Is there somewhere that they can go to find out about your results? Yeah, um, you can check Sam's website. So things will be uh, coming through in, in Sam's website. And again, we are happy to circulate them directly to you so you can share through your network uh, too. I think that's uh, Thank you. Um, an easy win also. <laughs> Excellent. All right, is there anything else you'd like to add or are you happy with that? Uh, I think I've said enough. <laughs> I'm a bit long. I'm so sorry. I'm not the shortest person on my answers. Uh, so yes, I, I'm available if people want to have um, yeah, more detailed discussions. I think that's, that's important and that's a feeling that I have from, from speaking uh, with producers is that there's a lot of questions on this um, and again we can only cover so much when we do this, this presentations and this discussion so yeah they are free to email me my, my contacts are on Sam's uh, website and we are we are happy to discuss uh, closer what are the questions and also what are the needs because there might be other needs that we are not identifying here that would be important to to cover excellent well thank you very very much for your time I really appreciate it it's great to have a different perspective about a different topic, so thank you. Thank you, my pleasure. <laughs> All right, speak to you again soon. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye-bye.